What's happening, everybody? So I've been getting a bunch of questions about camshafts lately. Must be that time of the year. So let's talk about what makes a stage one, a stage one, a stage three, or whatever. And let's talk about really what to expect when you get a camshaft installed in one of these Gen 3 Hemis. Now, I am going to be talking about other engine families. That's mainly just to give you guys a bit of an anchor so that you understand where I'm coming from when I'm talking about some of these special specifications for a Gen 3. So, sliding into this, when you talk about stage kits for a camshaft, keep in mind there's no ASE specification for a stage. There's no ANSI for a stage 1, stage 2, or stage 3 camshaft. All that stage is is a bit of marketing, but it's letting you know that a stage one is less aggressive than a stage two, three, etc. And the higher the number stage, the more components you're going to need to make that camshaft work the way that it's intended to for your particular project. So, what are we talking about when we're talking about these camshafts? Well, you have to know where you're starting from, and you have to split the Hemis up into five sevens and six fours. The five sevens start off life with an intake duration around 190 degrees. That's going to be very, very common when you're looking at similarly displaced engines from other manufacturers, and well, mainly in this case from the LS platform. LM7, for example, has an intake duration of about the same at 190 or 191. So when you start going up in camshafts with the Hemis, though, there's a big difference where an LS you can kind of just keep adding camshaft and cam it to your RPM preference. Basically, you can just put a cam in an LS and make power until the thing flies apart. Hemis are a little bit different because Hemis, the larger you go in camshaft, the worse sometimes that engine will tend to get because the heads flow so much CFM. A typical LS cylinder head may flow 240 or 250, maybe even as high as 260 CFM. <laughs> a Hemi, just the 5.7 cylinder head flows 320 to 330 CFM. There is a huge difference and that has a massive effect on even going up slightly in duration in a camshaft. What ends up happening is you lose a ton of power down low because that airflow velocity through those runners is just slow. In other words, the air going through that intake runner slows down drastically with greater duration. And because they flow so much, that effect is just magnified. That's why it's very important not to try to go too aggressive when you're talking about camshafts for Hemis. Matter of fact, best to err on the side of caution. Whereas you might be used to something else with a different manufacturer. With the Hemi, you're dealing with an engine that has cylinder head flow that's equivalent to rectangle port big block Chevy heads. And in some cases, it's even better than that. So for your 5.7, I recommend a camshaft that is no more than about 220 degrees intake duration and about 230 degrees exhaust duration. Pretty much anything more than that is going to make a 5.7 extremely doggish down low. And by the way, we can't talk about duration numbers unless we talk about that lobe separation angle. The factory 5.7 liter cam has a 115 degree lobe separation angle. It's kind of a bit of a performance cam in that respect. Not too crazy, but just understand that your 6.4 liter variant has a 121 degree lobe separation angle. Same goes for the Hellcat. But getting back to the 5.7, I, I would like to see a camshaft with something more along the lines of 113 degree lobe separation angle, just a little bit tighter than that 115, and that's going to help that 5.7, well aside from sound, really good, it's going to help that thing make really good power through the mid-range. So no more than about 220 and 230 on the exhaust, stay with a little bit tighter lobe separation angle. And uh, well, and make sure you're dealing with a tuner that really knows and speaks Mopar. Uh, I cannot stress that enough for this project if you're going to jump in the middle of it. Now, 
I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the 6.1 liter Hemi. Now, primarily I'll be talking about Eagle variants. In other words, the VVT 5.7 and the 6.4 liter. Not gonna get into the Hellcat stuff, but if I talk about the 5.7 and I don't talk about the 6.1, I'm gonna get blasted in the comments. So let's talk about the 6.1. Kind of the middle child here. Probably my favorite of the three Gen 3 Hemi engines though. The cylinder heads are really good in the 6.1. They flow about 315, 320 CFM. It's got a great intake manifold. It's also fixed the same way that the CAR 5.7 intake manifold is fixed. And they both flow about the same. With the 6.1, well, it doesn't have variable cam timing. And well, once you start putting camshafts on these things, neither will you. So for the 6.1. I like a little bit more duration. I'd like to see something around 226, 230, 232-ish on the exhaust. So 226-ish on the intake, say 230, 232 on the exhaust. And that is gonna give you a real nice combination for that 6.1. You're gonna tighten up the LSA again to about 113 degrees on the lobe separation angle car is going to sound good. It's going to run good. And with that intake manifold, just like the 5.7, it really does emphasize mid-range hit. When it comes on the cam, it gets real efficient, real quick, and you know where your money's been spent. Couple that and really with all of these camshafts with long tube headers so that you can recapture some of that power down low and to aid in scavenging, and you're gonna have yourself a combination that again, not only sounds good, but absolutely rips. Now along for the 6.4. There's two different ways you can go with the 6.4 liter. Remember that 220, 230 cam I was talking about for the 5.7? Well, let's talk about the 6.4 real quick. It's got 215 degrees duration on the intake side. And Notice that is more than the 5.7, but it's still less than what I would recommend for a 5.7 if you're going to put a cam in that 5.7 liter engine. I know some guys like to try to use the 5.7 or the 6.4 cam in the 5.7. It's got way too wide of a lobe set, um, and there's just not enough real duration there to make a big difference. There are other cams that would make sense, other profiles that would look good. I wouldn't bother with it. Don't try to save money at that. It's just not going to help you. But let's talk about the 6.4 cams and one of the ones that I like. The 220-230 with a tight LSA is a really, really good cam for the 6.4. It won't lope. It's going to be real stealthy. But the thing about it is, is that it's got more duration on the intake side. The exhaust side is significantly more Tighter LSA means it's going to have a little bit better mid-range hit, if you will, but it's going to make the car act like a bigger engine. It's a real good way to describe the car if you call it like 426-ing your 392. It just literally will make more power everywhere, partial throttle the whole bit. Really kind of the cam, the car you wish it would have come with. Now, if you want to go more than that, well, then you're looking at something like a 226-228, uh, 232, 234 type of a look. Again, with about 113 to 114 degree lobe separation angle. That's going to be where you're going to want to be for that 6.4 to really get a noticeable difference out of it. So 220 or a 224, 226. Um, and again, that 230 and 234 on the duration for your 6.4. Now, talking about intake center lines, uh, for the most part, you're going to be looking at 109 degrees across the board. Uh, some guys like to rock them a little bit more advanced at 107. I don't really like doing that. I prefer 108 to 109. I never rock them back past 10 degrees unless I'm putting together a supercharged application. And since we're not really talking about that, I'm not going to be getting too deep into those waters. But for the NA guys, that's about where you're going to want that intake center line. Now, what are the power increases that you can expect? Well, 
typically you're looking at 30 to 50 horsepower in terms of power increases. That's what you're looking at when you're talking about camshaft upgrades for the Gen 3 Hemi for something that will actually work on the street. And that's the big part of this. Uh, if you're trying to make a whole lot of power and you don't care about drivability, if the thing is going to lurch or if it's going to stall out at lights, if it's going to be a turd down low and you're going to be hitting this thing with a ton of dope, meaning nitrous, then this video may not necessarily be for you because those cam profiles are significantly more aggressive. Those would be more of your stage four type cams. What I'm describing to you is for the 5.7, what would be kind of referred to as a stage two. Uh, what I'm referring to you, and for the 6.1 as well, what I'm referring to the 6.4 as would be like a stage one or a stage two cam. Getting into what designates a stage three, four, or what some people try to call the, the, the max effort cam, None of that really exists in the real world because a max effort cam means that you're no longer running the stock intake manifold. And that's really where these cams do their best work is by working with the stock intake manifold, whether it's active in the 6.4 or the 5.7 truck, or if it is an actual fixed intake manifold, like what you'd find in the 5.7 cars, Durango's, or for the 6.1 liter. Now, with all of that being said, yes, there are other ways to get to a specific camshaft profile or power output. You can tighten up the lobe separation angle, rock the cams forward, and tighten up the duration. That's another way to put a cam together for the 5.7s. Some guys like doing it that way, and it does work very well. There's not a one best way to go about it. I prefer a little bit more duration only because it's a little bit easier on the valve train components. So let's get into that part of this. We haven't even talked about the components that you're going to need to make these camshafts work. First of all, I don't believe in any cam that is a no aftermarket spring required cam. It doesn't exist in my world. I say you need to have better springs and the springs are going to depend on which cam you're going with and in what particular combination and platform you're working with. But the reality is that you're going to need valve springs for this to work properly. You're going to need an 80 thousandths thick at least push rod to make these things work. You're going to be turning higher RPM. You need components that will be able to withstand the use, misuse, and abuse you're going to be putting this thing through. So there's that to consider as well. Don't try to just throw the cam in the car. You're going to need an extra set of lifters laying around to get this job done as well. Colloquially, on the Gen 3 Hemi side, they're known as Hellcat lifters. All they are is that they're non-MDS lifters. The reason why they're called Hellcat lifters is because Hellcats don't have MDS. So it just kind of get you start calling it a Hellcat lifter, it makes it sound real high performance. They're not just non-MDS lifters. But that's what you're going to need. Non-MDS lifter, 080 push rods, better valve springs to make the whole thing work. Now, we've talked about some of the underlying specs. Have you noticed that I haven't mentioned anything about lift at all throughout this whole chat? The reason why I haven't mentioned anything about lift is because lift Honestly, guys, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. All of the cams that I'm talking about are going to be somewhere between 585 and 605 lift once the lobes are cut. At that stage of the game, there's not a huge difference when we're talking about flow potential out of the head between just shy of 600 or right at 600 lift. So it's the lift part of this is not as big of an issue as some people tend to try to make it out to be. In fact, a lot of times the lift of the lobe is just basically the follow through when you're trying to get certain mid lift numbers put together. You can't just make the cam square. So it's more or less a follow through of what the parabola would be. There's an SAT word for you of that lobe when you're putting it together. So I try not to get too deep into lift. Lift will kind of fall where it falls depending on which cam you're putting together anyway. So, um, so let's review. 
five sevens don't go above 220. If you go above 220, you're going to be putting together a cam that's going to be soft, either down low, or it's going to be really bad about wanting to surge at, uh, at lights. You're going to have to have a, a different converter if you decide to go much more aggressive than that. Uh, six one, guys, you know, stick with that 224 ish cam. Again, the car is going to be real happy. Um, you know, six ones and six fours are very similar in that respect. They're roughly the same displacement, have roughly the same cylinder head flow. Uh, you know, that 224, 226 menu kind of seems to work pretty good for, uh, for those particular engine families. Uh, outside of that, make sure you have the right push rods, the right springs, um, and the right lifters for your application. And above everything, before you even decide to get going with this, get with a tuner and get their recommendation for cams that they've worked with. Don't show up to a tuning shop with all these parts ready to go and say, install these and make my car fast. A lot of times, tuning shops, especially if they don't speak fluent Mopar, are going to end up giving themselves a concussion, beating their heads on a wall, trying to get that combination to work well. Get with guys that do this day in and day out with Mopars. Pites Performance, P-E-I-T-Z, that's Alex Pites. That's the guy I used to work for. He's a good friend of mine. I learned so much working with him and putting the camshaft profiles together for Pites Performance. It means more than you know to work with the tuner before you start looking at vendors for camshafts. And if you work with Pites, he can work with you to get a camshaft put together that will fit whatever need you're looking for and will work within the project that you've got going on. So with that, I'm gonna wrap this up. Post up your questions below. If I miss something, let me know and I'll try to address it on another video. That is a wrap, adios.